we entered Afghanistan as part of Operation Enduring Freedom in 2001. Mm -hmm. We were always going to leave. So there should always have been on the shelf a plan. What are we going to do with our interpreters? We use interpreters all around the world. We use mm -hmm. the Persian Gulf. We have uh, Farsi interpreters. We use interpreters in Iraq. We use interpreters and guides. And not just interpreters. We have guards, local aides, local right. basically contractors and helpers. So, mm -hmm. so this, was always going to ha this was always going to occur. This idea that, um, with the greatest respect to everyone else, this idea that this was suddenly happening... As soon as the US abandoned the Bagram airfield in July, this was finished. This was over. Everything was, in, was going to happen. Anyone who had half of any insight into how war works knew as soon as Bagram was in, just insanely abandoned. Bagram is this massive, it was Soviet, then American air base. Uh, it wasn't just an air base, it had a large prison in which Taliban and al-Qaeda terrorists were held. Once the Americans inexplicably abandoned that base, and apparently that was on orders from Biden to the generals against military advice, the, th the operation was over. There was no recovery. The Afghan National Army dissolved. They knew as Bagram's gone, no support for us. Mm. The regime collapses. The, the Taliban rolls through every city and rolls into Kabul. So we are trying to extract people per an artificial deadline on 31st <coughs> August from this, t this terribly small airport. It's a really small airport. And this idea that we have people, you can, tell, you can tell how unplanned this was, because if you're planning an evacuation, you're evacuating lots of people. So you prepare for evacuating children. So you have lots of children's food, children's need, elderly people, you have stuff for the disabled. Mm. You know, you have all sorts of sanitary needs. You have, for instance, you know, a bloating facilities for males and females. You're in a Muslim country. Mm. You, know, you have all this set up. None of that was done. We have people waiting desperately outside the gates of the airport, hoping to get inside. And I just want to say this. Yeah. No one will ever work with us again. No one will ever work they with us again. No one will trust us. No one will want to work with us again. They'll say, look what happened to the Afghans. They upped and left and they cut them, they cut them loose. And the worst part of this is in Canberra, they must have a master list or they must have some list of people who worked with Australia. They would know them. Mm. They would know them by name. They'd have their biometric data. They would have all of that. The idea that this was not on the shelf, ready to go, is absolutely incomprehensible to me. And if we have a Senate that is half worthy of the name of a House of Review, they'll be diving right into this because this is an absolute disgrace. It is a disgrace to Australia and it's a disgrace to every Australian who served in Afghanistan. We are leaving in an... We're going to leave in a almost shameful way. Not shameful because the way we serve, but because the fact we left... People who put their trust in us at grave risk to themselves, we left them behind. It is an absolute disgrace. And I, I, I commend Jason on his work. I commend everyone who's been involved with this. But it is an absolute disgrace and a terrible way to finish um, what honourable work we did do and we did try to do in Afghanistan over the last almost 20 years.